I woke up on my friend's living room floor, blood covered in sweat, whole body was freezing, but on fire, it was like agony. And I was like, what the hell? There was four paramedics stood over me. Uh, so I was diagnosed when I was 21. I gained loads of weight, peeing all the time, you get cranky whenever we go out, you don't eat, and you're fine after you eat. He was like, you're constantly thirsty. It doesn't matter how much you drink and you pee even if you don't drink anything. Uh, do that. You, we don't know how you're standing. Mm. Your blood turns acidic and your body starts cannibalizing yourself. Mm. It's horrible. And uh, when, when were you diagnosed with, with uh, diabetes? Uh, so I was diagnosed when I was 21. Mm -hmm. So this would have been... I don't know. Again, maths terrible. My brain just kind of shuts down every time I try and do any sort of <laughs> mental maths. How much did it change your life? Like when, when you got massively, yeah. especially at twenty one. Yeah, yeah. Because I just got to drama school, uh, and I was going out at partying every weekend, mm -hmm. um, doing physical activity all during the day, and I had no idea. I had no idea how to control it mm -hmm. whatsoever. Um, and yeah, basically, I, I gained loads of weight. I was just under 16 stone at one point, which is a big a lot. Yeah. yeah, I was like twice as the size I am now. All right. Like, yeah. 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 Um, I was yeah fat man. Hmm. He was a he was a thing. Uh, <laughs> and was he a different person? Oh, a wilder person? Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> Probably a bit more reckless. Um, <laughs> in fact, definitely a bit more reckless. Mm. Uh, but yeah, my friend at the time was uh, basically said to me, "Hey, I think you've got." You might have diabetes. And I'm mm. like, what? He was like, yeah, you're peeing all the time. You get cranky whenever we go out. You don't eat and you're fine after you eat. I was like, okay. That's like, you're constantly thirsty. <laughs> he was like, you're constantly thirsty. It doesn't matter how much you drink. And you yeah. pee even if you don't drink anything. Uh. And I was like, okay. He said, also, you're getting fat. And I was like, well, yeah. I was like, you know, at the time, I was like, well, I'm, I'm 18. Yeah. I'm drinking. I'm growing. Time. Yeah. My metabolism's slowing down. I'm not, I've taken a year off and I'm not doing anything. Yeah. So I was like, it makes sense. I told my parents, and they were like, no, nah, you're overreacting. So I went down, got a free blood test down at uh, Lloyd's Pharmacy, and they were like, okay, this is reading off the, the chart. Mm. Uh, can you come back in the morning after you've done a, like a, a fasting? Over yeah. yeah, yeah. I said, yep, yeah, cool. Came in in the morning, did it again. They went, yeah, uh, are you able to get to A&E right now? And I was like, right now? I was like, yeah, I mean, my dad's outside, okay. that's fine. And they're like, yeah, do that. You, we don't know how you're standing. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so I went into a &E. They were like, yeah, okay, your, your blood sugar levels are through the roof. Like, uh, mm. we don't know how long they've been like this for. We need to get you tests and stuff. Did all the tests. And they came back a week later and they were like, yeah, type 1 diabetes. And I was like, What's great. the difference in type? Technically, there's type 1 and type 2. Mm -hmm. But then you also have gestational, I think is what it's called, which is basically catching diabetes through being pregnant. Okay. Yeah. A lot of pregnant women can get diabetes and then it goes again once they've like given birth. So it's like it goes away. After yeah. That. Yeah. It's like a pancreatic stress, I guess. Okay. So type two is where the pancreas doesn't work as well as it should, but it still secretes insulin into mm. the body. Um, and you can manage that with a tablet, diet, sometimes insulin. Mm -hmm. Uh, type 1, the pancreas just doesn't function at all. So every bit of carbs, every every carb you eat turns into sugar eventually. So you have to count your carbs, mm -hmm. then inject insulin to counteract those carbs mm -hmm. so that your body doesn't cannibalize itself, which is what happens if your blood sugar levels are too high for too long. Mm -hmm. You end up with something called ketoacidosis, which I've had twice, which is horrific. It doesn't even sound will good. kill you. No, it's basically acidic blood due to the fact that you have too much sugar in your system. And your body goes, we don't know how to do, deal with this. Your, mm. your blood turns acidic and your body starts cannibalizing yourself. Mm. It's horrible. So yeah, I got that uh, just as I was starting drama school and I was in the hospital every weekend just because I didn't know I didn't know what I was doing. Mm. I had no idea what I was doing. And I've been told different things from different doctors. It was like, well, you can eat this, you can't eat this. Mm -hmm. You should be eating this, but you shouldn't be eating this. And then it was like, well, you can eat whatever you want as long as you take the insulin for it. Yeah. And then it was like, yeah, but now the insulin dose is different. And that's it. I mean, that's changing for me constantly now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very lucky now because I'm on the, I'm now on the insulin pod, which is an automatic thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sensor, back then it was finger pricking and, Pens. So how, how much did, did like technology 
changed since like you know when you were diagnosed and now is it like completely different yeah. world yeah. yeah completely different world i even when i was at school i remember a friend had diabetes and she would use syringes with a little vial of insulin and do it that way and in I was school like, that's gnarly yeah 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 and then when i got it they were like cool there's these pens that you have to click per unit and you count and do all your ratios and, yeah, yeah. and you inject it but you have to finger prick every yeah like every something something like every hour or every three hours or something like that yeah your fingertips by the end of it are gnarly every yeah. week you're like i'm losing sensitivity in my fingertips which is also a thing of diabetes so you're really not helping that by <laughs> pricking it constantly <laughs> all right um and it wasn't until last year when i nearly died from taking too much insulin by accident for the amount of pizza i was eating pizza is a known enemy of diabetes uh, just it's because it's a known, is a known enemy of, of, of like anyone who wants to eat healthy, basically. But it's so nice, but it's so, so good. good. So you took too much insulin. I took one unit too many, right? And I had a sensor, so the sensor you could uh, it explode it. <laughs> well, not quite, but it did break. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can you scan it with your phone, yeah, and it, it comes up with your readings, so you don't have to prick your finger anymore. It's great, and you, yeah. you you kind of move that around and you change it and things. Um, and yeah, I took one too many units, staying at my mate's house, mm. went to bed, my sensor broke overnight, didn't mm. have a spare one, didn't realize. Mm. So therefore, when my blood sugars dropped low and I went into a hyperglycemic attack, I didn't wake up because I didn't realize. And I woke up on my friend's living room floor, blood covered in sweat, whole, f whole body was freezing, but on fire, it was like agony. And I was like, what the hell? There was four paramedics stood over me. Mm -hmm. My mate's in the corner of the room in his underwear, just being like, this is like 6.30 in the morning. What yeah. the fuck is going on? And I couldn't speak. That was the weird thing. And I was really confused. So I was like, okay, it must be something to do with my diabetes. But yeah. I was talking and it sounded like I'd had a stroke. I was like, talking like, Bleh. and I was like, oh, oh, something's not okay here. Like, I was terrified. So the paramedics so were like, something's not okay. What was your first hint? Yeah, All right. right, waking up covered in blood. I was like, what the hell happened? So basically what happened Wait, was- blood as well. Happened. Blood, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the bit that confused me. I was like, hang on a minute, why is there blood? Yeah. So what happened was my friend had heard me making weird noises from the spare room. All right. And he was like, I'm just gonna go check. Opened the door and apparently I was full on exorcist, arched back, like all muscles tense like this. And I was just like groaning. On the ceiling. On the ceiling, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, and I was just like, uh, and I couldn't talk, I couldn't. And then I started having convulsions. Yeah. And I basically started seizing, uh, which I've never, that's never happened to me. I've never had a hypo like that before. Like, right. I don't even remember it, but this is what he was saying. So he called paramedics. I then tried to make my way from the spare room into the living room. I must have been trying to find sweets or something. I don't know, it was just confusion. So mm. I was just moving. Paramedics turned up. I'm now by this point just seizing on the floor. And they tried to get a cannula in uh, to, well, they, they first tried to feed me glucose, but my jaw was locked so tight they couldn't get it into my mouth. Mm -hmm. So then they were like, right, we're gonna have to get it into a cannula. So they tried putting the cannula in, but where I was fitting, they had to have three of them hold me down while one of them was trying to get it in, hence the blood everywhere, because I was just flailing my arm around uncontrollably. Um, once they got the glucose in my system, I then slowly started to come around and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And once I was awake enough, I was like, how do you feel? And I was like, I feel awful. Like, I feel like terrible. And they were like, well, we're not surprised. Uh, yeah. You're lucky your friend was here. Because uh, they said, if, uh, if he hadn't called the paramedics or if he hadn't been there, I had 30 minutes before I'd have been in a coma and an hour before I'd been dead. Oh. And I sat there and I was like, huh, okay. Right, like I've had scares before, I've had moments before, but you always, well, I personally was always like, yeah, it's fine. Oh, mm -hmm. These things happen. People yeah. go through these things. You deal with it, whatever. But this one was different. This one kind of, this one hit me hard later that night. I had a breakdown about it and I was like, what is going on? And I had this weird sense of loss, mm -hmm. which was really strange. And I think it's because in my head, like I quite like to believe in things like, you know, multiverse theories or mm. like, you know, all these different theories of life. And so I like to, any anything that can't be disproven in mm. science, you know, means that it's potentially real. So yeah, I'm like, well, of course. Like if disprove you, it. Yeah. So let's, you know, mm. that's an exciting it's thing. It's still a possibility. It's still a possibility, yeah. exactly. But that 
but the one thing that kept going through my head was a version of me didn't make it. Mm-hmm. There's a version of me that didn't survive that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what if one day I'm the version that doesn't survive it? And I was like, fuck, that's, that's, I don't like that. It's deep. Yeah, so got in contact with my team that night and I just sent them an email and I was like, look, this has happened. I'm not okay. I need to speak to somebody. And they were mm. like, cool. Come in tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. I was like, oh, thank you. So I went in and they're like, okay, cool. We're going to get you lined up for the insulin pod, which is a little box that has insulin in it. No more pens. It's linked up to a little controller, like a second phone. Mm -hmm. Uh, You input the carbs that you're going to eat and it constantly drip feeds you insulin and it boosts every time you need to eat. So basically, you, but you need to tell it like what do you If I'm eating, eat? yeah. I need to tell it what it's doing. But okay. if my blood sugars naturally do this, it mm. will regulate itself. Mm-hmm. And each time you put a new pod in, like every three days, you have to yeah, replace yeah, them. Yeah. It's got an adaptive AI in it. So it learns your patterns mm-hmm. from each pod. It can constantly be kind of learning what you're doing and yeah. keeping you regulated. That's where we want AI. Exactly. Yeah. That's where we want AI. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. AI is, you know, they can remove trash from the sea. They don't, they don't need to be screenwriters. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that plus a new sensor and it, it revolutionized my diabetes. Mm. It was insane. Yeah. All right. It's been mad. 